There's more trouble for Boeing. A criminal investigation, a failed audit, a dead whistleblower and multiple mid-air mishaps. It's basically Murphy's Law in action. Everything that can go wrong is going wrong. Let's start with the latest. A Boeing whistleblower has been found dead in the US. His name is John Barnett. Now, Barnett worked at Boeing for 32 years. He flagged many safety issues on their planes, specifically in the oxygen system. He said the onboard masks had a 25% failure rate. So one out of four masks may not work. He also accused Boeing of using substandard parts. Of course, the company denied this, but later probes upheld Barnett's claims. So how did he die? Barnett was in South Carolina for the Boeing case. He was to appear for questioning on Saturday, but he did not turn up. When officials went looking, they found him dead inside his truck. It was parked at his hotel's car park. And cause of death? Apparently self-inflicted wounds. Now, this whole incident is very fishy. Barnett was on a crusade to expose Boeing. Why would he take his life? Why would he just give up on his mission? Only a thorough investigation can give us the answers. But for Boeing, the headline is bad enough. Plus, it comes at the worst possible time for them. You may remember the mid-air incident from January. A Boeing plane's door panel just flew off while the plane was mid-air. After that, the US FAA decided to investigate Boeing's production process. A quick side note, the FAA is the Federal Aviation Authority. It is America's aviation watchdog. As part of their probe, they conducted 89 tests. Guess how many Boeing failed? 33 out of 89, that's a 37% failure rate. Not bad for a homemade toy plane, but for a real one, 37% is borderline metal coffin. Boeing supply did equally bad. That Spirit Aerosystems, they make the fuselage for Boeing's MAX planes and Spirit failed 7 out of 13 audits. 7 out of 13, they failed. One of them involved the door panel, the exact part that flew off mid-air in January. So what is Boeing doing about all of this? The company says it is implementing immediate changes. It is making a plan to strengthen a safe, its safety and quality. And what is the US government doing? After all, they cleared these planes to fly. Reports say the U.S. Justice Department has opened a criminal investigation. Again, the focus is on the January incident. All of this compounds Boeing's problems. It's already a company in crisis. Just look at the share prices. In March 2019, Boeing shares were worth $378. And now, just $192. That's a 50% drop in five years. If you think this problem is only Boeing's, you're wrong. The problem affects all of us. Because aviation is a duopoly, meaning two companies dominate this market, America's Boeing and Europe's Airbus. Together, they make up 99% of all large planes, plus 90%, 9-0, 90% of the overall industry, two companies. This close nature extends to supplies as well. For example, very few companies make engines for planes, like Pratt & Whitney and General Electricals. So what happens if one of them fails? Or if one of their planes is temporarily grounded? Or if one of the engines runs into a problem? The whole industry will be disrupted. It can happen in two ways. One is delivery issues. Let's look at Indian carriers. A lot of them have placed orders from Boeing. Akasa Air is buying 150 planes, Air India is buying 220 planes, and Indigo is looking to buy 25 planes. These aircraft will drive their domestic and international expansion. But what if safety issues delay that? It could cost a lot of money. The second problem is plane renting costs. You see, airlines do not buy planes all the time. Sometimes they lease them. But that cost is rising fast. Take the Airbus A320 plane. It's a workhorse of the aviation world. A 10-year lease on that plane costs $117,000 per month. It is 14% higher than last year. Same with Boeing 737-800. Another workhorse of the aviation world. Its lease rate is 13% up compared to last year. The question is why? A, because demand is rising, more people are flying than ever before, and B, because of supply shortage. 
Let's go back to that January mid-air incident. The plane involved in that incident was a Boeing 737 MAX 9. Now, that model is still grounded in many countries. So what do carriers do when those planes are grounded? They have to look elsewhere for planes. And that is the danger of a duopoly. It's just one step away from a monopoly, a situation where the supplier can dictate price and supply. If that happens, it's bad news for customers. Prices of planes will rise, leasing costs will rise, and carriers will dump that burden on us. So what is the solution? At this point, there isn't one, honestly. You see, making planes requires a lot of capital. You can't just randomly enter the market. Plus, Boeing and Airbus know all the right people. They're in bed with regulators across the world. So this duopoly is not some organic market development. It's a carefully crafted system, one that keeps aviation dependent on Western producers.